Hello everyone, welcome to the true finale, the real final episode of the Minecraft Piggy build tutorials. This episode is only going to be one part because it's really short, really easy, really simple to do, and it is distorted plant, which is what I use to refer to the second phase of plant after the dynamite activates. It's way shorter than the first plant, and it will not take you very long at all. It's the shortest map in the whole game. And if you're wondering why I'm referring to this as the final part, despite having not done distorted memory, it's because I don't count distorted memory as an actual uh, part of the main piggy map thing. So this is the final main map we'll be doing, and if distorted memory gets enough votes, then that'll be one of the first episodes in the extra series that could be coming up where I'll do things along the lines of uh, the safe place, uh, the vault area where you unlocked Poli and Maul, uh, the the entrance to Carnival that you see during the intro cutscene to chapter 8. Yeah, that'll be the extra series. But for now, we're gonna finish off the main series with the final map in the game, so let's get started. So to begin, we don't even need that big of a space, because if we look over there, the map's not going to take up a massive space compared to the other maps, especially the first plant. So we're going to find a relatively big space, but not, not massive. We don't need a massive space. And we're going to punch out a line of five blocks in the ground. This map is going to start off the exact same way as the original plant does. So we're going to replace these five blocks with white concrete. Then we're going to go diagonally in all the corners like this. We're going we're gonna to just create a big white circle on the ground. And that's going to be the uh, main entrance, main area of plant. Just uh, the middle of the map is where we're going to begin. So I'm going to make the shape. It's pretty easy. I'll hover over it and you guys will uh, get to see it from above so you can copy it. So it's five blocks wide on every side and then those areas in the corner. We're going to fill all of this in with white concrete now. So I'll do that off camera because there's no point showing you it. This whole space in the circle is just going to be white concrete. And we'll end up with just a big circle in the ground. Now we're going to want to place some grey carpet in the exact centre block of the circle. So we're going to come to the middle of each side and just... So this here, that's the middle of this side. So we're going to bring it towards the centre. Then we're going to go to this side and find where they, the two sides meet there and pop the grey carpet there. Then we're going to grab back our white concrete. And now we're going to build along the hallways leading to the different areas. Now, in Distorted Plant, they're only just two blocks wide coming off of these areas of the circle. And they're just two blocks of light grey concrete. So, rather than building really long hallways that we have to go around a bunch, we're just making two blocks wide of light grey concrete uh, at every side of the white circle like this and I just have one more side to do and that just really helps because the start plant being a lot smaller than normal plant makes this build take like such a quick amount of time compared to the original plant so we want it looking like this all around now we're gonna grab our cyan terracotta uh, we're gonna wanna go diagonally off of either side like this and we're gonna need three blocks either side the hallways like that so we're gonna do this by every hall one two three one two three and this is just so that we can get the layout of what the walls are gonna be like and once we have these three blocks either side the hallways on every side we're just gonna connect them diagonally and it should add up with four diagonals of cyan terracotta as you can see just in every corner and it all adds up nicely. Now, we're actually going to grab some basalt if you have the Never Update, which most people do have access to the Never Update now it's released. 
We're going to destroy the blocks here and replace them with two blocks of basalt. Then we're going to place any block here and then we'll have two blocks of basalt like that. And then two blocks of basalt like this. So we want a basalt pattern that looks like that. And we want that once again at every single hallway. And that's just to uh, represent the distorted parts of the map. Like all of the weird black uh, borders that are around the points where the map changes into another map. So like this surrounds where plant transforms into say forest. There's this basalt pattern that separates the two. So we just want to replicate that on all these places because as you know there's four different areas of plant that are past maps and that's just gonna leave us with the hallways. I just have one more to do yet again. Really nice and simple. You, I don't really need to explain it and I'm not really doing a very good job at explaining it. You can really just look at what I'm doing with the basalt and yeah just copy that. I'd recommend having the basalt not facing upwards and instead having it face sideways on like this just because it kind of looks better for the balling. So this is what we've got the place looking like now. So we're going to grab some block of redstone or redstone block. We're going to go one above all of the cyan terracotta with redstone block. We're going to leave the basalt because where there's basalt we don't need any redstone. Just on top of the cyan terracotta we're going to place redstone blocks. Then we're going to go on top of the redstone blocks with uh, cyan terracotta all the way around. And these, these single blocks of basalt, we're going to place cyan terracotta on top of them as well. Just to uh, make sure that there's no gaps in the walls. So, just quickly gone around all of that. Now plant is looking a bit like this. Final thing we'll do with the basalt for now is, uh, these three blocks, there should be three blocks in between the basalt. Uh, we're going to destroy those floor blocks and replace them with... Uh, basalt. Don't ba face the basalt upwards, face it sideways so that this basalt and this basalt are connecting to each other with the basalt on the floor. Face the basalt like that. And that's gonna once again go in every basalt area. So like this. This is what we should have the place looking like now. So our next steps, we're gonna grab some light blue stained glass pane. We're going to go around the borders of the uh, hallways and the circle. I call them hallways, but they're really not. Just going to border this whole place of light grey and white concrete with a single row of light blue stained glass pane in every single uh, corner here so that the uh, halls connect to each other like this. Then we're going to, vertically speaking, we're going to leave one gap and then do the same thing uh, above it with a one block gap space. So like what I'm doing right now. And once we've done this, all this grass here in between the uh, walls and the circle, this is all going to get punched out on every side. So fill in the rest of the glass on this layer, punch out all of this grass. I'll do this off camera because it's a bit tedious to show on camera. Alright, so now you should have the place looking something like this. As you can see, in all the corners I put all of the stained glass. All these little areas that were grass have been completely punched out. That's all fine. Now we're going to focus on the most tedious part. And trust me, it's not that bad in this map. And it's the walling, the rest of the walling. We're going to go just like normal plant. It's normal plant's walling, but where there's... Where there's usually light blue concrete in plant, there's redstone block here. So to start off, we're going two blocks of cyan terracotta on top of everything we've just made on the wall. That includes these open spaces. Go above the open spaces just to uh, cap them off. They should only be three blocks high. So yeah, around the whole build with just an additional two more layers of cyan terracotta. And once we have that, we're going to just have a single row of black concrete going across the whole build. So just one row of black concrete. Uh, two rows of cyan terracotta below that, though. So make sure you have two rows of cyan terracotta, not one. And then we have this single row of black concrete. 
and I'm just finishing that up right now. Once we have done all of this, it'll be looking a bit like this. So next thing we're gonna do is similar to what's down here. Uh, we're gonna come to one of these sides. We're gonna have two blocks either side of cyan terracotta. We're gonna have one block of white concrete. Then we're gonna connect it with cyan terracotta. So every side should look like this. Then on top of that, you have redstone block. And then you have exactly the same thing above that. So white concrete exactly where it is underneath, like this. And as for the corners, the corners are just going to be completely left alone. No white concrete in the corners, just cyan terracotta and redstone blocks like that. So every side should look like this. And I'm going to fill that in right now. So just like I said, every side has the same pattern on it. Then we're going to go diagonally inwards for the next two rows of just plain cyan terracotta. And then there'll be another two rows of the same thing but diagonally inwards by one more. If you don't know what I mean by diagonally inwards, then look, this is what diagonally inwards means. We've gone inwards towards the center of the build, diagonally upwards. And that's going to go on for two rows. And then above this, another two rows of the same thing. But diagonally one more towards the center. And that will leave the corners like that. Just giving you a brief idea of what it will look like. Then I'll fill it all in so you can really see right now. Right, so like this all around the build is what I'm talking about. Then once we've done that. We can just go one more row of just grey concrete. And this is going to border where the roof is going in. And we need this just because part of the roof is glass. So we don't want to like... Say for example, I place glass here. And there's those blocks behind it. You can see that doesn't really look very good. But if I place the grey concrete in, that looks better. That That's what the grey concrete's for. Anyways, before we move on... We actually have a bit more tedious things to do down here. We need to copy what we've just done up here down here. So that means starting off with two rows of just cyan terracotta. Then underneath that we'll have the black concrete. If you've done the normal plant then you'll know to do this. And then we just have the white strips, the cyan terracotta, the redstone blocks, uh, the white strips again with the cyan terracotta. This is just a quick summary, then I'll like do it all in one go off camera, just to save time, because we've practically already done this, we just need to do it mirrored upside down and all that. Then like, just the two inwards diagonals. So this is what we're gonna be doing down there. Make sure to count this in line with the floor as one of the two cyan terracottas. It's just so that the proportions add up properly. Then, once we once that's all done, you'll need to fill in all of down here with just black concrete. Because it'll create a massive empty circle down here. We want that filled in with black concrete. I'll show you what it all looks like when I've completed it. Which I'm about to go off and do now. It's pretty easy. Shouldn't take too long. So, like I said, I did this entire under area off camera and filled in the remaining space with black concrete just because it's exactly the same as what's up here so there's no need to show you a step-by-step -step process because it's the same thing so now we're going to move on to placing some pillars around the build and these are in the different locations to a normal plant so they're actually on this circle now so we're going to come to one of these parts actually we'll do this in every part so here where there's the single block in the corner of the circle we're going to pop in a bit of white concrete in that corner and when it when it's in every side it should look like this with the stained glass connecting like that then we're just going to build the pillars out to be uh two by twos and then once we've done that we'll build them up to the ceiling and that's just two rows of white concrete here then three rows of light grey concrete, three rows of white concrete, and then we need three rows of light grey concrete again, 
then we need two rows of white concrete. And that should, it should bring you up to be in line with this last bit of cyan terracotta just before the grey concrete. So fill all of the pillars up to be the exact same like that. Then we can place in the ceiling, the roof. We can do that next. So fill in all these pillars the exact same. Once every pillar is built up like this, we're going to come to this grey concrete and with some more grey concrete, we're going to find the exact middle of the space. We can easily do that by getting to the middle of this area underneath. Just coming up above and we're going to place grey concrete going across the entire middle section on both sides. So we're going to come over to here and this is going to create a cross section in the middle of the uh, roof. Just like that. Now next thing we're going to do is uh, create a square around these pillars. So around all four pillars we're going to create a square just to border them on the ceiling. Just to uh, make it look a bit nicer around the pillars. I'm pretty sure in game the pillars have this. They have it in the normal plant so they should have it in distorted plant as well. But it's the roof, you won't really pay much attention, you will like almost never look up here during gameplay. So it doesn't matter that much. But once we have all of these, we're then going to place grey concrete in all these corners to create a square. Then we're going to place more grey concrete just like this to create, to just to make the square bigger. And that'll end us up with a pattern that looks like this. Once we have this pattern, we're going to fill in all of the blanks in the roof with light blue stained glass. And then we can move on to the real areas that, uh, the main parts of distorted plant, you know, the areas you'll actually be walking around in, the other maps that are incorporated into plant, like forest and all that. We'll be doing all that once this roof is filled in. When all of that glass is filled in, just one final detail on the roof. We're going to come to all these corners and just punch a bit of grey concrete in there. Just to like finish off the pattern. And just to look down, look I mean look up on it. This is what the roof will look like when it's done. Now, final thing before we begin these four areas is placing a few grey shulker boxes around. So the first one, and this is going to be deciding what goes where. So decide which area you want forest to be at. You're going to pop a grey shulker box in the middle of the first part where the stained glass is like this. So right here, you'll pop the shulker box there. This is where forest is going to be. And just in case you forget, uh, pop a bit of stone there. Because forest is where we're going to be starting off with. So once we get forest in, we'll know where everywhere else is anyways. So place one block of stone just like that where forest is going and place the shulker box like that. So now go into the forest area and then from the right, which is this way onwards, is going to be school. So we're going to place school. Uh, we're going to place the shulker box for school here. So in this row, where the pillars are. So in line with this back part of the pillars, we're going to place a shulker box in the very middle. And now from opposite forest, so that's here now, this is going to be metro. So to place metro shulker boxes, we're going to come to this row of the pillars and we're going to place one here and one there just like that. Meaning that this space here is going to be carnival and carnival doesn't have any shulker boxes actually so you don't have to worry about carnival's boxes because there aren't any now we're gonna start off as i said with forest so come to where we signified forest is gonna be and i put i put the stone there just because you might mix up school's shulker box and forest shulker box but yeah come to where you're gonna place forest we're going to need some stone because this is the cave part that's in plant. We're going to need green and red carpets. We're going to need campfire. 
And I'm just going to search for this to make it quick. We're going to need compressed ice or packed ice. Uh, I don't know if any version still has it called packed ice, but uh, I remember it being packed ice. It's compressed ice now, though. So, yeah, this is what we have to work with for forest. We're going to need the splash water bottle, and I'll show you why we need that in just a second. But to get started with forest itself, we're going to... Uh, we're going to line ourselves up with this pit, bit of basalt here. So we're looking into the right side here. We're going to place three stone on top of each other in line with this bit of basalt. We're going to extend it back by another three. One, two, three. So this part of the wall is four blocks long now. And three blocks high. Now we're going to go diagonally and place a block here. Go to the left of it by one. So this is two blocks. Then we need another diagonal, just like that. Then we're going to have another diagonal two blocks, just like that. Then we can go and make this part of the walling for the cave. And that's just one straight bit like that. Now the floor, we can punch all of this out very quickly. This is obviously all going to be stone. And the roof as well will be stone. But for the sake of light, I'm going to put the roof in last. So, yeah, fill in all the floor with stone. We should have the caves walling looking like this. Uh, do, do pause and fill it in if you aren't quite sure how to copy this. It's pretty simplistic though and small. Now, starting with the decorations, we're going to come to the center bit of basalt here and go one block of stone two. On this block we're going to place a bit of green carpet and we're going to place one to the right of it as well. Now going diagonally to the left and back off of this green carpet we're going to pop our compressed ice. Then diagonally back to the right off of the compressed ice we're popping the campfire. And then in this little area here diagonally back left from the campfire we're popping two pieces of red carpet and this is our cave area from forest complete all we have to do is fill in the roof and that is going to be really quick because this place is the smallest subsection just really quickly filled in like that and optionally what you could do with a campfire is throw a splash water bottle at it and that will extinguish it there we go so that's forest complete so the next map, we're go the next part of the map we're going to build after forest is school, and that's over here as specified. So as you can see, there's forest. So he is going to be school. So for school, we're going to come into this area, and this is going to be a 13 wide by 11 back space, and we're going to start from this bit here. We're going to place blue concrete, leave this gap and then place white concrete there. So right now that's looking like that. Now we need to count from this one block 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like that. Now we're going to place blue concrete and white concrete as the wall everywhere where there isn't basalt. Where there is basalt we're going to leave it blank so that we can see the basalt on the other side of the wall, like this. We're also going to punch out the grass here. So right now this is the flooring and that's a bit of the wall. Now we're going to take this flooring back by 11 and that's uh, that's counting from here. I'm, I think it's counting in line with this and not that. So counting from this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then we're just going to then connect this part over to this over here. And we'll punch out all of this grass and instead fill this flooring in with a 2x2 two two of white concrete and light grey concrete checkerboard pattern that will look like this. And we're going to do that across the entire thing. The walling is going to be blue concrete, then two rows of light grey concrete. And then above that, there's a... Uh, one sec. We'll fill in this corner as well. 
just so that we can see the yeah you know what I'm saying uh, we're gonna then on top of that we're gonna place acacia wood so blue concrete two rows of white concrete one row of acacia wood and then on top of that we'll have a row of white a row of red and another row of white so this is the walling pattern and that's what the flooring pattern will be so let's fill in this whole space alright so here's all of the walling and flooring for schools part of the map filled in of course uh, fill in above the basalt with the walling we're gonna need we're gonna need that filled in otherwise it won't look right so ignore the parts where there are basalt but do fill in above the basalt once that's all done, we're going to grab some spruce fence and oak slab. We're going to be placing in some uh, tables, because this is the cafeteria area, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to come first to the left corner here. We're going to place an oak slab just one diagonally inwards from this very corner. Then we're going to pop a spruce fence there and an oak slab next to it again. We're going to leave a one block gap space, oak slab, spruce fence, oak slab, one space, oak slab, spruce fence, oak slab, and that should leave you a one block space either side and a one block space in between where these are going to become tables. So we're then going to leave two block, three blocks of space. So there's two blocks in between the spruce fence and then there's going to be another spruce fence behind it. Then there's going to be a one block gap and we're gonna have the same thing so one block gap spruce fence with a two block gap and then another one so these are gonna become four blocks long tables with oak slabs either side them to uh, act as seating so as you can see we're gonna place oak slabs on the tables on the fences even to connect them together and form tables that are four blocks long so there are three rows of tables and there are two tables in each row. That should give you enough space for there to be one block gap between all of the tables and a one block space around the tables as well. And once we've got all these placed in, we're gonna actually come to this table. So this is the entrance for perspective. We're at the entrance right now. We need to get to the table in the back left area just there this is where the safe is going so we're gonna look at this table go to the right by one turn this into a full block place polished andesite on it that's the safe now this is a white safe but there are no white buttons the closest we have is the stone button so if you want you could put that there but until diorite buttons get added which actually isn't that bad of an idea uh, yeah, we'll have to make do with this safe not actually being white in Minecraft. Now, this is school complete. This is the school area complete. All we have to do is uh, fill in the roof with stone. And then once we've done that, we'll pop some lanterns in. So I'll show you where the lanterns are going because I'll have to place one anyways to light the place up. The first one is going to go in all of the corners. There's going to be chain hanging down three blocks and then the lantern. So in all the corners like that, just just above that oak slab to put it into perspective. Now I'm going to fill, fill in the rest of this roof. So the roof is now completely filled in. And we've got one lantern placed in. Like I said earlier, we need one in all of the corners like this. So hanging three chains down and then placing the lantern. And then there's going to be a one block gap and we're going to have another three chains coming down in the lantern like that so one two three then the lantern and we need to do this at the back as well of course so one two three and then the lantern and then again one two three and the lantern and then finally in this corner here one two three the lantern one two three and then we'll place the lantern now there are some more lanterns you could place if you want to and those are in line with this gap in between the tables. So we're going to look up and then hang down one 
two, three, the lantern, and then one, two, three, the lantern. Of course, we'll do that on the other side to make everything uh, add up and be symmetrical. So hanging down three chains and placing in the two lanterns. Once all of that is done, we can head over to this area, which is going to be Metro. So we only have two spaces left to do. Let's get started on Metro now. So coming into the Metro area, we're going to first start with this side. We're going to take it one, two, three blocks back with Lime Terracotta right here. So in line just after this little part where there's a missing bit of basalt there. Then we're going to fill it two blocks higher with light grey concrete. On this side it's going to be different. This place needs to be seven blocks wide. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll fill that in with stripped oak wood. And where that ended, this is where the other part of the hallway that's the entrance area to Metro will begin. So this is going to be a three block wide hallway. So this space that I've just punched out is all going to get filled in with stripped oak wood. And then this back wall here, we're going to start from the left side. There's going to be one block, a one block gap. And then it's going to go up till this here. So that's going to be a gap as well. This is going to be the door leading into the area. There's no actual door there, it's just a doorway. This is going to be a crawl space next to it. So the crawl space is there, the door goes right there. And that's the hallway part of Metro done. There's no decorations in the hallway. So we can move on to Metro itself, which is going to be 12 blocks wide and 11 blocks back. So we're going to start from this corner here by the crawl space. We're going to punch out one and then go this way 12 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like that. And then 11 blocks this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we're going to, of course, punch out this whole area and then connect it up. Then all this grass is going to get punched out and replaced with stripped oak wood. But before we do that, I'll show you guys the walling so we can do that at the same time as we do the uh, floor. So we're going to fill this all in with lime terracotta and light grey concrete as usual up till these last four blocks on this back wall. So these four blocks are going to be orange concrete at the bottom, but still just light grey concrete above. And that's on the side this side from the crawl space. On this next side it's going to be three blocks of orange concrete and then the light grey concrete. Then the walling's actually going to be one, two, three, four, five upside down polished blackstone stairs. And then another five on top of that, another five on top of that. So just three rows of upside down blackstone stairs. That's going to be like a garage door that's there and then the rest of it is just the usual lime terracotta with light grey concrete on top of it so fill all the space with the floor and walls in and now we can get to the decorations once this whole place is filled in so here's the walling of course this corner has on this wall four blocks of orange on this wall three blocks of orange the five blocks of blackstone stairs over there. We're going to start with this wall. So on this wall there's going to be these two blocks and then there's going to be a three block wide table of spruce slabs and stairs like that. On this block, at this end block of the table there's going to be a brown banner and then another brown banner the block coming off of the table there. Now in this corner from the garage door there's going to be another spruce table and that's just going in the very corner so one two three blocks wide again and that's the next spruce table pretty sure that's uh, the only other spruce table so I think we can get rid of most of this now we're going to need the strip dog wood I'm going to keep hold of the strip dog wood uh, next I'm going to grab out some 
terracotta, normal terracotta, some light blue stained glass, and some smooth quartz slabs. This is going to be for the vending machine that goes here in this orange area. So there's going to be one, two terracotta there, one, two light blue stained glass next to it, one, two smooth quartz slabs above. There's the vending machine. Next thing I'm going to grab is some black wool and also a cauldron and an iron trap door. And in this little corner, we're going to place the cauldron and the iron trap door so we can get rid of those now. And then I'm going to place a black wall in front of it. And that's just going in the corner from the vending machine. I actually still need my walling blocks because we have two pillars to, play, to place. In line with this last block of lime terracotta before the orange concrete, uh, we're going to leave a two block gap like this and then place lime terracotta there. So there's two blocks there and then put the light grey concrete on top of it to build up a pillar in the middle of the room. There's going to be another of these uh, in, in line with it and two blocks away from its side of the wall like this. Once we have those in, uh, in the two blocks in the middle of them, we're going to place two dark oak stairs facing away from each other. And right now I'm facing this direction, so to my left we're going to extend it by one, and to my right we're going to extend it by another three. And that'll make it five blocks long, both of them, just two stairs facing uh, away from each other. Two rows of stairs that are five blocks long. We're going to place a barrel on this row, right there. And now, in the... Uh, we're almost done. In this uh, corner, pretty sure this might be last decoration. Wait, we have another bin bag to place as well as this. So, right there, I'm going to place some black wool. That's right by the pillar there. Now, here is the last decoration. Just one, two, three, four, five of dark oak stairs in that corner there. Then we place a brown banner on top of that stair. This is Metro done. So that's all complete now. All we have to do is fill in the roof and pop some lanterns down for lighting. The roof for both parts of Metro uh, is just stripped oak wood, just like the floor. So fill all this in with stripped oak wood above. You might also want to uh, just place blocks all around this uh, area of blackstone stairs because I think stairs aren't counted as full blocks and they might let light through them. So if you block off the stairs like this, then they won't let natural light flow through them and that'll help with the build because there's not really meant to be much natural light in here except for what gets through this glass. So now the final part that we have to do is carnival. So the proportions for carnival is 15 wide by 5 back and we're gonna make this out of strip birch wood. So one, two, three. We're gonna first create an area of three by five. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's three blocks wide as you can see and it goes five blocks backwards. Now we're gonna extend this either side, one, two, one, two. And we're gonna fill that in with strip birch wood. And then it's going to extend by another four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that should add up to 15 if my calculations are correct, which I think they are. So yeah, I'm going to punch out this whole space. Actually, not this whole space. Um, I'm going to make three by threes of grass block. One there and one here. So these three by threes are going... Uh, one block away from the edge of the carnival walkway. This is going to be area where there's trees. If you've, if you've done the carnival tutorial, then you'll know that there's trees in the middle of the pathway at some points in the map. And there's two at this part of distorted plant as well. So we'll need to pop those in. I'm going to build the trees rather than use saplings 
to guarantee that I have the space to do what I need to do. But yeah, I'm going to grab some materials for this space, then I'll get back to you. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is make the uh, thing that you use, the, use the hammer on. The strongman test your strength thingy. So we're going to start by making three blocks of red concrete at the end of the walkway. In line with the middle three blocks of the area. Then we're going to extend the middle block out towards the other part of plant by one like this. We're going to build up two blocks of yellow concrete above the center block, then place a gold block above that, a polished black stone wall above that with a stone button coming off it, and a polished black stone button down on that block. Then we're going to grab some crimson trap doors either side and place them going up this uh, machine. Now some of you might think this does not look good, it looks ugly and it doesn't look like what it's meant to look like. Uh, I agree with you to an extent, this is not the best way to make this, I'm sure of it. But it's such a tiny prop that I'm trying to remake in Minecraft. I'm not a god at building by any means. You, It's the exact same as it was in my carnival tutorial. If you know a better way to make a strong man test your strength, hit the hammer, whatever this thing is, then by all means go ahead and make it your way because this is not the best way I I'm sure it is I'm sure it's not anyway next thing we're going to make is going to be a uh, stand so it's not far from here and we need red concrete we're gonna place two blocks of red concrete just there so from this block here one in front of it and then one two to the left and then another block off of that we're going to place two blocks of chain on top of them, and then two blocks of smooth red sandstone slab. Then this this block either side, we're going to place item frames with stone buttons to uh, represent wheels. And that will have the stand looking like that. Once that's done, we're going to grab some stone brick wall, some andesite wall, some lantern, and some andesite slab. This is for the uh, fencing around the area. So we're going to go behind this machine and extend one either side with stone brick walls. Then we're going to place andesite walls either side. We're going to build these andesite walls up to be four blocks high. Then we're going to place andesite slabs, one here and one extending towards the walkway. We're going to hang lanterns off of these andesite slabs. And there we have two lamp posts. And once we've got those lamp posts, we're going to place a spruce stair, a spruce slab, and a spruce stair like that. Then on this side as well, spruce stair, spruce slab, spruce stair. Then we're just going to connect stone brick walls to the rest of the build and turn it around the corners, connect it to the rest of plant from the tables there. Now the last thing we have to do in this area is grab some oak leaves and some oak log. We're going to build up six blocks of oak log, one, two, three, four, five, six, on in the center block of these grass. Then we're going to just place leaves in any kind of pattern in this area. So we need a three by three of leaves to make this tree. I'll show you what I do. So this is my first tree. I'm going to build the other one. So what I do with these trees is I play, I start by placing a 2x2 two two like that. Then I place a block here, here, and here. And then I make every side look like that. So extend behind these by 2, here, here, and here. Extend these on 2. And then place here, here, and here. And then extend these up by two. And then place one there. Every side has that same pattern with the gaps in the same places, including the top of the tree. That's what I do for the trees, at least. It's up to you what you want to do with these trees. Just don't let them take up too much space. This is about as much space as they should occupy. And once we have those trees placed in, 
we can just go around them with stone brick walls on the grass. So stone brick walls gonna completely surround the trees. And then the final thing we have to do in this whole build is go around this entire space with black concrete. So black concrete gonna go around the whole place. Uh, underneath, underneath the fences, underneath the stone brick walls and the tables as well. We want it underneath that. So under here, under here, and then we need this black walling to extend up, uh, we'll extend it up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we'll extend it up nine. So nine blocks of black walling, and that just gives enough space above the tree. And then we'll roof it off. So I'm going to do all this off camera, then show you what it looks like all completed. And then the map will be done. So this is what the black walling is going to look like once it's complete. As you can see, it just connects to the rest of plant. Goes all the way above the trees by a little bit and roofs off and it goes underneath the walls and the tables as well and once that's complete congratulations this is done you've completed successfully all of distorted plant well done now if you've built both plant and distorted plant then what I recommend doing to connect them is having command blocks that teleport you to the exact coordinates so if you like, say you had a button somewhere, you press the button, it activates a command block that teleports you to specific coordinates that will set you like here. I think here is where you start off in Distorted Plant. So use teleporting command blocks if you want the maps to connect. I feel like that's the best way to do it. But yeah, well done. As for the series, this is the main piggy build series now completed. I have built every single map except Distorted Memory. And that will possibly be an upcoming extra. Not long after this tutorial goes up, there will be a poll on Twitter. And I will announce, I will make a video announcing when the poll goes up so that you're all aware. And that you can all vote on the poll as to whether or not I should build Distorted Memory. The poll will last like, maybe like a day, two days, I don't know. I'll decide later down the line, when, once I make the uh, video announcing the poll. But yeah, if you don't count Distorted Memory, this is every single map I have now made in Piggy. So thank you so much for watching this series and giving me all the support that you've given me on this channel. It really means a lot that I was able to come this far in this series. I really wasn't expecting to do it all at first. At first I was only going to make house, then I saw the massive positive reception, and I knew, I just knew that this had to be done. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series, found these building tutorials useful. These might not be the last build tutorials I do, who knows, but for, for the, at the moment, uh, this is the Piggy Build tutorial series officially over. Thank you for watching. It's over. It's an it. It's an it. It's an it over. You won and she tells you and she loved you and she's gone.